me the bone. <laughs> All right, we're here at Sebring. It's the last day of the show, and it's turned out to be a beautiful day. And we finally had, were able to secure the folks from MVP Aero because they've been busy. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Daryl Linz. And Daryl, we've got a question for you about your project here as it goes on. And one of them has been, when we saw you at Oshkosh with, at the Air Venture Show last year, you, had, you were covered up with people all the time that were seeing a lot, but one thing they couldn't see was below a certain line of the hull. Why was that, and what's changed since, Daryl? Okay, that was that was for a, for a reason. The, uh, uh, the that part of the aircraft is being defined and also patented. And uh, so, what we should make though really clear for everybody is that uh, it's not just an amphibian. It's actually what they call a triphibian, which means it lands on land, water, and snow. Those three, those three surfaces. Okay, so it really is something below the bolt hull line. Yeah, it really is. Okay. Or maybe there wasn't then, but there is now. There is now. So you got some fresh news about this, you said. Right. The design goal uh, for the hull system and also the landing gear system uh, was pretty uh, challenging, and uh, but they've accomplished it. Uh, we're going to be revealing that sometime in 2015, hopefully by Oshkosh. Um, but here were the design objectives. The first thing was that we want the aircraft to handle those three surfaces without equipment change, if possible, so okay. it land on snow. Okay, so no, no swapping out of wheels for skis or whatever that would mean, right? right. Okay, that's our goal. It's not a guarantee, but that's the goal. Um, but what we are saying, though, is that the hull systems, the landing gear systems, we, number one, we want it to be much more forgiving for the learning pilot, especially amphibious operations that can be unpredictable. And uh, so a few things are, we expect that uh, the one problem with, with amphib amphibians is landing gear down in water. We think in an MVP that's going to be a non-issue. Okay. okay. Uh, secondly, yeah, the problem there is if you get the gear down in, you get some really uh, well. The boat hull can't do its job basically. Right. And and the aircraft can be, and some aircraft can become quite unstable or possibly even dangerous if, if you do that. So it's a big regimen to go uh, landing in water, make sure the wheels are up. You're going to try and confront that. A very, flaw in some piloting operations. Yep, very high priority for the MVP design team. And then the also we want the hull to be able to accept some damage, okay, from water operations or even land operations, striking obstacles in water. Because it happens, right? It happens, it's going to happen in your seaplane. And so we wanted to, to address that to some degree so that the aircraft could do that, strike an object, and still be operational. Uh, so there are, I can tell you now that there are sacrificial panels oh, yeah. on an MVP. Next now, step. would these be things that could be relatively or, or easily replaced then after such a damage may have occurred? That's the whole point, exactly. Okay, and certainly not sink the boat. I mean, that part that part would be kind of obvious, but also so while well, I'm not out for six months of flying now while I get repairs done. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Excellent. Yeah, and then the uh, uh, another thing I should probably make clear about an MVP is that, uh, you know, We've got so many great comments about the retracting forward canopy basically turns itself into a boat, a platform that you can fish from. But people say, well, is, aren't you really pretty vulnerable under those circumstances? It's wide open, you've got your cockpit. Well, another design goal, which we will prove out, is that an MVP uh, can accept, it is essentially waterproof. It can accept a lot of water in the cockpit area. Our goal is that they you mean some water like a wave splashing over a boat goes by after you've deployed all these surfaces right. and stuff and some clown goes by in his big boat, you get a wave in the boat. What are you gonna do? So, yeah. so what we did is, is the, the goal is that the MVP is essentially waterproof from that deck that you saw. Um, where we're going is we want it to be to the extent that a passenger could be in the cockpit up to the chest of water and you still have a 100% functional MVP. Wow. Your instrument panel is up above, you start your engine, run your bilge pump, and that's your strategy. Drains it from the cockpit, so that the aircraft is now functional and floating. Well, that's a pretty good goal. I mean, up to your chest in water, that's a lot of water. That's a lot of that's water. A, that's pretty well up to the whole line. Yep. Almost, yep. So. If, if you see the sponsors, we know we have the flotation. <laughs> We're just working out the systems. And uh, so the MVP is designed to be very much less uh, delicate uh, than uh, most seaplanes in the water environment. Uh, both from which would mean that you could operate in some not that you're going to go into heavy water but you know winds come up and things happen that you can't always predict even with the best flight planning right and especially if you're out enjoying the aircraft as a not an aircraft and stuff happens 
Yes, you could go into a location where it was just fine in the morning, but in the afternoon, afternoon now you got one foot waves. What do you, how do you how do you get out of there? Right. And so that's another goal of our airplane is to be able to handle rougher water conditions. In there. So this year should be really exciting. We're going to announce the the, the details of that for everyone to see, and uh, hopefully at Oshkosh we can talk a lot more about. It. Well, I hope so. Yeah. So we'll have to visit with you again at Oshkosh. Are you going to be at Sunny Fun too? Uh, yes, I think we will. And the, what's happening is actually the world tour is changing a, a little bit here now. Right. I was yeah. going to ask you about that. I knew you were planning on going around the country and so right. forth. So. Yeah. It's it's in it's going to be in Sam. There's a dock strike. I guess you know everyone knows about that on the news. The entire West Coast. So the MVP is on a ship. Uh, that's why it's not here at, uh, at the oh, show. Right. right. And. Well, Daryl, uh, we want to keep following you. You know, the aircraft is not ready for delivery yet. We know that, okay. but the intensity of interest suggests to people uh, that they want to follow it. They want to keep up with what's going on. How best can they do that? I suppose on the web. And if so, what's the address? Yeah, the website's very extensive. Uh, just go to mvp.aero, which is mvp.aero. No www. Just type that in. It'll take you to the website. Okay, sounds great. Lots of stuff about affordable aviation of all kinds on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining Daryl Lins and I here at Sebring.